Greetings again, everyone. Uh, this is Pastor Song from Lighthouse Global. Um, I am having some trouble with Wi-Fi again. <laughs> let's just let's just pray. If you're coming on and and uh, if you're watching me, please say hi. I hope this doesn't stumble again. Um, I just pray that everything will go fine today. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I just pray that you will um, just put the plead the blood of Jesus all over this podcast in this room over the signals. No interruption, no hindrance in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for this monthly prophetic word. Pray all these things in your name. Amen. Hi, everybody. Please say hello. Um, I do just, you know, just please pray as you watch because I've noticed that um, because I travel so much, I'm in different settings a lot. Sometimes I get like phone signals that are kind of off or like my Wi-Fi isn't working as well. I wish I had a, a studio or something, but, you know, I travel, as you know, and um I'm uh, recording this from somewhere else, and so that's why it's, it keeps like turning on and off, and I feel bad, so I have to start all over again. So I do apologize, but let's all pray that the word will be delivered, everything will go smooth, that I won't have to preach the same thing three, four times in Jesus' name. Hi, everybody. Is my volume okay? Yes. Maryland is in the house. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. If you're, you want to say where you're from, God bless you. May God just be present with you as you hear this word. So today is October 1st, and um, there was a lot going on today. I felt like transition into October was kind of tough. I could, first of all, I sensed a lot of witchcraft today. It was just a kind of a tough day. But when I woke up this morning, um, I woke up around like 5, and the Lord made it very clear to me that today I had to speak about uh, word curses being canceled. So I may change the title of this message a little bit because as I prayed into it and and uh, wrote about what I wanted to write uh, speak to you, the Lord gave me so much download and um, yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna start off with Lord uh, the word curses being canceled. So let me just go through some Bible verses here. Um, Proverbs eighteen twenty one: The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And then, uh, you know, the word about how um, John first John 1, 1 through 5, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So God, word existed with God. It's like a word is like its own entity. It has power. And word was God. So Jesus is basically the word of God that can't manifested. So God is talking about the power of the words. The word, earth is created by the word, word of his mouth. And I really felt like this month is going to be a month of uh, war between words. And uh, what this is what the Lord told me. I'm going to try to be um, as concise, but also I really feel anointing upon this word. So yeah, receive it in Jesus' name. Um, number one, God said, the witchcraft through lies and accusations will be exposed and cut off in Jesus' name. And uh, when there's like a prophetic thing that God's doing at the same time, a lot of times it, it aligns with, um, hi everybody, <laughs> I hear, I see you from Singapore as well, God bless you. I see God doing things on a personal level, individually for you, but also corporately in churches and also um, in nations. So I really believe that this is like a, a, a word that applies to even your nations, wherever you're watching from. Uh, there's going to be a witchcraft lies and accusations that will be exposed and will be cut off in Jesus' name. In the month of October, I saw the courtroom of heaven as I was writing this word. I literally saw the courtroom of heaven. I think we're going to talk about that a lot today. And lies and false accusations were being just spewed out from the enemy. The devil was in the courtroom of God trying to accuse. It was like the last uh, vengeance of the enemy trying to just lay false accusation upon God's people. Um, just petitioning God to release judgment upon you and I and all the godly people just spewing lies and false accusations. But Jesus, your great advocate, my great advocate, my great lawyer, your great lawyer, will speak on behalf of us this month. I believe there's an amazing vindication that is coming, that Jesus is going to be your advocate, my advocate, the righteous people's advocate and a lawyer this month. And, um, you know, as especially I know that a lot of prophets and also people who are Messianic Jews talk about this a lot. And I just felt like there was also significance of this word coming to pass. We just entered into the Hebrew New Year of 
5781 and and the 80s is the decade of the mouse and i thought it was kind of interesting because my last name is bay which in Amer in english people pronounce as pay and this 80 is basically pay and i really felt like personally i just received it for myself that this is a decade in every way i just feel like um god is just blessing me and saying that hey song this is your decade <laughs> of the mouth and uh, of women speaking out also what you know as you know the reason why i'm faithful in prophesying and releasing these words to you as a woman of god is because i truly believe that um god is going to open women's mouths and people who have been oppressed for a long time he's opening our mouths and it's a decade of the of pay it's 80 means it's pay uh, of the mouth when you you shall decree a thing and it shall be done when as we speak it's going to be done and then uh, it's 81 and Aleph one means ox, father, God to lead and to teach and to provide leadership. So there's like a like, you know, I know some prophets have said there's an ox anointing that's here. A father is really going to teach us and lead us and provide us with leadership as we enter into the, uh, the year of 81, 57, 81, that there's going to be a father anointing and, and like leadership that comes to plow the land like an ox. And the, 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 the apostles will rise up. I truly believe that new apostolic figures, new people who are willing to plow the ground and really um, pioneer some new things and apostolic movements will come forth. And God's going to anoint a lot of apostles, men and women, to uh, lead the body of Christ, to lead the church. There's new, new churches that are being birthed. And even as I preach to you, um, behind the scenes, I am already preparing to plant house churches and we've been doing we've been talking about it for a while and we're already doing it and so um it's it's here it's here so i'm just blessing anybody that hears god's voice and wants to start churches go ahead i bless you in jesus name so there's there are these micro house churches that are being birthed all across america all across the earth and i just want to bless that but when this in this season what the attitude that we need is like sounds funny but it's an attitude of an ox <laughs> it's an attitude that says i am willing to do the work i am willing to put in my energy i am willing to pull the weight i'm willing to lead i am willing to pay the price i am willing to walk with god and work co-labor with jesus christ so that is the decade and the new year that we have entered into. So I just want to bless you. But in this season, in order for these new things to come forth, I really believe that month of October, this month, is a month when God is going to expose the accusations, the witches, and things are going to be exposed. And we are really in a war of words. How many of you just turn off the TV? I mean, we watched the debate and it was just war of words, right? <laughs> right now, there's so many um, words that are that are from every camp and, um, you know, I don't, you know, it's just words are sent out and floating around and inspecting people. Now, um, I just want to share a little testimony about the power of words because it says the tongue has the power of life and death. And, and it really, you know, Jesus said that um, we would have to um, speak about the care, every careless, we would be accountable for every careless word that, that we spoke. Um, Jesus told us that um, you, we shall not call our, our brothers, our neighbors, uh, a fool. We are not supposed to call them a fool, right? We are accountable for the things that we speak out of my mouth, our mouths, because words have power. Words have power, amen? It has a power to bless and it has a power to curse. So this curse thing is really real, you guys. Word curses are very real. If you've been in healing and deliverance ministry, I mean, I caught off word curses. I think most Asian women that I pray for all the time in, South, in Korean ministry when I used to do ministry in the U.S. is that I would say most of the women are um, live under this oppression of curses. Um, it's If you live under oppression of a curse of some sort, um, you wouldn't know what that's like unless you lived under it and believe me i know how it's like to live under it because it operates like this fog to oppress you it's a demonic thing the devil hears every careless word that comes out of somebody's mouth he justifies it uses it to come against us and uh when i was uh, i saw one documentary that i was i thought it was so fascinating demonstrates the power of words it was on education TV in South Korea, and it was an experiment that they did on the power of words. 
and they took a bowl, two um, glass jars of already cooked rice, and with one jar of rice, um, they put blessings on it. And they asked the um, TV station people to constantly bless this jar of rice. Isn't that funny? Like just a cooked white rice. So one jar had good words. The other jar had bad words. So whatever bad word you can think of, like you can be angry at it. You can like curse it. You can say all sorts of things, negative things. The other jar, they blessed it. They thanked it. They said, oh, we thank you. You know, we, I appreciate you or like good for you or good words. So after they did this experiment, put it in this um, office room, two different jars of rice, and made them do this for a month. After a month of this experiment, they were comparing how the rice was rotten in a glass jar. And believe it or not, it, was, it looked completely different. The one that had received curses and negativity was just rotten in a really bad way. Like it was deformed and it had bad colors. It was rotten and it was all messed up. But ironically, the war, the pot of rice, the jar of rice that was appreciated and thanked this with good words, this jar of rice actually was very, uh, it, it, it looked fine. It looked like it was rotten, but it was just one layer of, of um, yeast or you know rotten parts and then it, it looked so much cleaner so it was this exper experiment that they did and they they had a documentary on the power of words and this education tv so you know what i did i did this at home can you believe it i did this at home so we did it at my house with my kids um for about a few months actually not just one month but i put one jar of rice um, near the shoes, like underneath, and I didn't even care for it. I neg neglected it. The other jar, we put it by the sun, like by the window. And I, you know, honestly, I forgot to do all the experiment. You know, I wasn't like intentionally blessing and cursing. But after a few months, we found, we took it out. And you know, the effect of it was so different. Even the one that I put near the sun where everyone can see and there was no shame in this rice I know it sounds really funny, but we put it on the on the window for two or three months It was wider this rice is supposed to be rotten, right? But it was wider than the rice that we had put near the shoes where like our feet, you know We were just like not caring neglecting so we did this experiment I highly encourage you to do this experiment with your kids and teach your children about how with the power of words and how your words can affect a jar of rice. Now, you know, and so that's why when you raise a child or when you're dealing with people, you have to constantly thank and bless them. That's how they come alive, right? But just like that, I feel like the Lord said, you know, right now, what's the reason why I share the story is because, because the words that are being spoken, the words that are being uh spewed out what you say about somebody what you uh declare about something how you gossip how you talk how you treat someone it all affects matters because words just like worship music it's a frequency so the frequency affects the physical matter um if i constantly bless my children as i raise them and say, thank you, I love you, I think you're the best thing ever, you're doing such a great job. I know they're gonna be amazing leaders, but as a parent, if I'm constantly putting them down and being sarcastic and being like, you couldn't, you know, how come you only did that? Or like, you're not smart enough. If I keep saying that to my children, they, they feel less. Their physical body is affected by the words of the parent and it deforms. So how does healing happen? Jesus healed them by a word of his mouth. By a word of his mouth. You can heal people and be healed in Jesus' name. That's all you have to say with power and positivity and faith. And then they become healed. Amen. I see, I feel like there's healing that's being released even as I speak these words. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will uh, give us revelation about the power of words that are in their mouths right now in Jesus' name. And we cancel. We repent of all the negative words. We cancel the negative words right now in Jesus' name. Now, so uh, in in month of October, so this is a prophetic word, not a teaching segment, so I'm just going to tell you, 
In the month of October, I believe, we may experience more war of words. We're going to have to be careful what we listen to and how we say things. Because we will experience more of this war of words this month. But stay awake and stay in the word of God, the truth. Be careful what you say. Read and declare and vocalize the word of God, the truth. About you, about your nation. Um, actively cancel the lies of the enemy. I believe that this nation, wherever nation you're from, things can turn around if you stop complaining. Stop complaining. We are not to complain because the complaints, if they're collected together, the devil uses it to bring a country down. A nation is pulled down by, by the words of people's mouths. A family is pulled down by the words of, the words of a husband and a wife. Um, relationships are broken because of gossip. Trust is betrayed because of gossip, what you say. Your church ministry will fall if you have gospels in your church. You, as a member of your church, can, uh, can even birth an amazing apostle. You can bless your senior pastor as an apostle, or you can pull him down by gossiping all the time. I believe that congregation has a power to raise an amazing leader or pull him down. I've seen it many times. As a member of a church or a member of an organization, even if you're just a member, what you say about your pastor affects the way the ministry goes. If you appreciate them, if you say thank you, if you say good things about your church, if you speak positivity, then you are building that church up. But if you're constantly complaining, if you're constantly pulling people down, your ministry goes down. The, the senior pastor has no power. I truly believe that. So we, just like that in a nation, right? If we constantly complain about the, the governors, the mayors, the, the city, the officials, the leaders, even if we complain about the president, you know, all of those things, the devil uses to pull them down, makes it harder. But if we constantly bless, we appreciate, we thank, we repent, we build them up, it affects people. So that is why I believe, I, I believe we need to repent for some of the uh, careless things that we have spoken, even against our enemies. You have to be very careful what you say about your enemies or people that you, that you don't agree with. People you don't agree with. Actively cancel the lies of the enemy and vocalize the word of God in this hour in Jesus' name. Some of you also have, I believe, some of you have written forms of lawsuits or written forms of false accusations. Some of you have written books against you even and written forms that are online that are against you. Uh, if you're like a famous person, if you're a man and woman of influence, you've got things that are written. God is about to tear them apart this year with his fire. The devil kept a false record of who you are, but God is going to rip them apart. In this month, in Jesus' mighty name, I truly believe that this will happen this month in Jesus' name. That God is about to rip apart some of those written documents, false accusations that are against you in whatever form in Jesus' name. Now, number three. So, as I was preparing this word, the Lord kept showing me the Cinderella story. And listen, I don't really um, remember these things. It's totally by God. You know, I wasn't even thinking about Cinderella. But the Lord kept uh, telling me about Cinderella. I actually felt like I had to watch the movie today, but I didn't have time to. But um, this month is going to be like the transformation of Cinderella. So the transformation of Cinderella is that she was a daughter, but she was oppressed by her stepmother and stepsisters, right? Suddenly her mother died and she uh, had to deal with stepmother and stepsisters. The wicked stepmother and stepsisters, the Jezebels who came between you and your father, these things will be dealt with. Now, uh, regarding the Cinderella story, one, a revelation of you being a royalty and a daughter of God, the Father, will come to you. So I believe this has been happening. How many of you have been experiencing this special revelation even in the midst of COVID? I feel like in this year, the Lord's really breaking uh, things apart so that you come to a place. He's been working on you. So you can come to a place of revelation of you being a royalty. You know, in 1 Peter 2, 8, it says, 2, 9, it says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I bind and break any kind of spirit of jealousy against this word. I feel like all since all day today, I felt like there was an attack of spirit of jealousy against this prophetic word. And, um, you know, normally when I go through a huge transition in my life, a uh, step into blessing, uh, I've had it many times, I would have um, strange um, aches in my body and I know exactly which part, if I'm aching, it's like an introductory. I feel like right now there's some spirit of jealousy that's against, because really Cinderella's story is about stepmother and stepsister is being jealous of Cinderella, right? The devil is a liar. The devil is jealous of your destiny. The devil hates you to be a royalty. I feel like spirit of jealousy has been unleashed in a different level. And some of you are target of jealousy. And I bind that even against this prophetic word. I feel like even against my channel, against me, there's spirit of jealousy. I bind you devil. And I expose you and I, I ask God that you will deal with it in Jesus' mighty name. Shakarara yeah, so there's been a revelation of who you are as royalty. See, Cinderella, who she was, was she was the, the beloved child of her father who had everything. She was royalty. She was supposed to be at the top of everything. But then the stepmother comes in, the jealous one. This month, God is, is he's been working in your heart to get you to a place of understanding that you are a daughter of God. You are the royalty of the father and this month god is going to expose jezebels and witches jezebels and witches will be eliminated jezebels and witches will be eliminated now on a national level that's what that's what it is you know last year in december or even this year there's you know all the stuff that's going on um within america against america the destiny of america you know what it is is because the devil is so jealous of the destiny of america the devil it's a spirit of jealousy spirit of jealousy is um is the the head demon of spirit of murder, spirit of violence. Cain, spirit of Cain. Cain was jealous of Abel because Abel was, his 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 worship was more acceptable, acceptable to God, right? And he was extremely jealous with spirit of jealousy that killed him. So there's that going on right now, but God is going to deal with the witches. God is going to eliminate the Jezebel. I'm talking about not only on the individual level for you, it's going to come to you as, a, as well as a prophetic sign for those who have been faithful. It's going to happen on a national level. The God is going to expose the, the root of this jealousy, the root of this Jezebel. Jezebel will be exposed, the root. The chamber room of the enemy's camp will be exposed this month. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I say yes and amen to this word. The God, you are throwing down the Jezebel this month in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And what this Jezebel and witches, their mission was to come between you and your father. Very simple. It was to come between everything and everyone. I mean everything and everyone who came between you and the father is going to, God is going to remove it. Everything that stood between you and your father will be cut off. Everything and everyone who hindered your destiny and your high calling will be exposed and dealt with. Every roadblock, every stumbling block, every witch, every warlock, every white witch, every uh, false friends, every uh, distraction will be cut off this month in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Father, we say yes and amen. Do this work in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Number three, regarding the Cinderella story, the highest authority will take your case. The high judge will finalize his verdict. This month, you're going to hear... Uh, God making the final verdict. He's going to release, finalize the verdict for you. He is your judge. He will judge it. He, and you know, what, what this, in this Cinderella story, I was, as I was thinking about the story, I was reminded of how, uh, you know, it's a, you know, we don't, we don't want to go there with the witches and the, uh, uh fairies coming and stuff, but supernatural help thing happens. Cinderella suddenly gets help. And then she transforms into this beautiful queen like princess and then she goes to this ball and she's completely transformed but who takes her it's the highest authority who notices her it's a real story of esther who notices her the king does the the future king does so there's a there's a there's a um a meeting of a future king that recognizes cinderella as a royalty right that kind of thing happens so that was her destiny it was the highest authority in the land 
that noticed her, just like that's the story. Who noticed? Who noticed Esther? It was the king that noticed Esther. This is happening this month. The highest authority in whatever realm you've been operating in, whoever that's been oppressing you, the highest authority will take your case. And who is our high judge? It is God Almighty. God is taking your case. God is on your side. He is your judge. He's going to finalize your verdict. Verdict. He is going to be on your side. He is with you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. So God said, Song, look up the names for um, he, God is my judge. And who has the meaning of God is my judge? In Hebrew, it's Daniel. This month is going to be a month of Daniela's and Daniel's. I am so excited. <laughs> I'm getting so much revelation as I was preparing. Daniel, Daniel's are going to be highlighted this month. You Daniel's have been thrown into lion's den and the lions couldn't eat you up because you're a man of righteousness. Some of you have been that way. God is saying God is your judge. Daniel's are being vindicated in this month in Jesus' mighty name. So Daniel means God is my judge. So for Daniel, what it was was like, he, he had authorities against him. He had people who chased after him and said, you can't pray like that. You have to do it this way. But Daniel said, no, no, no. My highest authority is God Almighty Yahweh. I'm going to follow Yahweh's rules. Some of you have been that way. So I've been that way. I have people chasing me. I have people who hate me. I have people who want to take me out all the time. But I say, you know, no, God is my judge. I'll just, I have, I have a direct line with my God and he is my judge. You're going to have to go to God to get that verdict. You can file hundreds of lawsuits against me, but my judge is my God. Even if I go to prison, it's okay. God is my judge. Hallelujah. Amen. Suddenly there's a surge of boldness that's coming over you right now in Jesus name. There's suddenly there's a surge of boldness and courage that's coming over the body of Christ. We need Daniels. We need you, me. I have to say, you have to say, God is my judge. I will take my case to the highest authority. I have the best lawyer. He is going to vindicate me. This is a month when lawsuits will be dropped. False accusations will be dealt with. Vindication is coming for you. God is your judge. God is your judge. God is my judge. The earthly courts cannot judge me because God is my judge. God has decided what outcome it will be. And I have found favor in the highest court of, of heaven. Just like how Cinderella found favor with the prince. Prince noticed her. And then and everything was taken care of. And the, the witches were dealt with. Because the highest judge, highest authority recognized who this woman was. And the, the mother couldn't do anything. The step, the wickedness just had to go. That is what we will see in this month in Jesus' mighty name. And I love, love, love these verses. Let's go through Psalm 26. Vindicate me, Lord, for I have led a blameless life. Those who are like Daniel, who led blameless lives. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind. For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. Those who have been saying this, God is saying to you, that he will vindicate you this month, this month. You trusted in the goodness of God. You have been tested and tried. God examined your heart and your mind. You had tried not to sin against the Lord. You've been mindful of his love for you. You just, you relied on his faithfulness. And he is saying, I am vindicating you this month in Jesus. Mighty, mighty name. Psalm 7, 8. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity. Oh, most high, those who have been living a life of integrity, God is about to vindicate you in Jesus' mighty name. Psalm 43, vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an un unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. God is about to rescue you from the unfaithful nations. Some of you have enemies, not just one or two, but you have a whole nation against you. You have a whole tribe of people. You have a whole church that kicked you out. You have a whole, whole, everybody in your city hates you. Some of you are going through things like that. Some of you have been through so much shame. Some of you have, have been rejected by your own kinsmen, by your own nation, by your own ethnicity. But God is saying, I'm vindicating you. I am rescuing you for those who are deceitful and wicked. And you are my, you are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? Enemy, your season of mourning and oppression is coming to an end. And God is saying, send me your lights and your faithful care. 
Let them lead me. God's faithful care and His light is leading you. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. God is taking you to a place. And this word really was highlighted today. Faithful care. God's faithful care. He's going to care for you. He's going to care for you. He's going to love you. He's going to care for you. And He's going to take you to a holy mountain, a place where you dwell. He's going to take you to a place of dwelling. Those who have been like vagabonds and those who have been feeling like you're homeless. Who felt like you were rejected by God. But God is saying this month he's going to vindicate you. He's going to position you. He's going to make the final verdict. He's going to bless your dwelling. He's going to take you to a high place, a high holy mountain. In Jesus mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. We praise you Jesus. I praise you, Jesus, for what you will do this month, God Almighty. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. High praise is in my mouth. High praise is in my mouth. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Jesus, that amazing things are going to happen this month. I am so excited. Some of you women, and the reason why God's showing me the Cinderella story, and he did show me Daniel, but I did feel, you know, that I'm called to the women in the body of Christ. And, you know, I counsel a lot of women, and God is saying that you are going to be like Cinderella. I'm so excited. There's going to be new women's movements, and there's going to be a uh, transformation of who you are. Some of you have lived under oppression of men. Some of you have lived under, uh, under uh, like you were the royalty, but they treated you, your stepmom, your stepsisters, those jealous ones, they treated you like you were a servant. You had to eat with the mice. You had to cook and clean and you had to be like in the low end. But God says, no, my daughters, I am moving you up. You are going to be walking into the fullness of who you are. God is going to give you a new dress. The Lord is going to take you to the highest authority. You are going to be vindicated. So I bless, release this word for the women of God, women of God in Jesus. Mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I trust you. Let's pray for an now word right now. Father, I thank you that in this broadcast, there's an anointing to break the yokes, anointing to cancel the curses. I cancel every word curse, even from the beginning of time, the curse that Eve had to carry. Thank you. In Jesus Christ, we do not carry the curse of Eve. We do not carry that curse that was upon Eve, even Father. Uh, it, because of Jesus Christ, that we belong to you, Jesus. That Jesus is calling us women as bride of Christ. We belong to you. We are wholly sanctified. Because of the blood of Jesus, that your gospel was good and enough to save us and redeem us from the curse of Eve, from the tempting words, that the temptation that she fell into, that we are no longer like that God, that we are new women, new creation because of Jesus Christ. You reverse the curse. Jesus has power to reverse the curse. And Father, right now, release that power to reverse the curses upon women, especially in Jesus' mighty name. Father is reversing, we're reversing those curses this month in Jesus name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you are going to bless the women. Thank you, God, that that is an L word right now. The word curses are being canceled in this hour in Jesus mighty name. God is raising up those who are called to the media. There's going to be a big, huge shift in the media, the world news realm, the uh, news outlets, the newspapers. And I see a shift in the media. It's kind of a new prophetic word. I'm just getting it right now. Download right now. I see like new magazines, new newspaper outlets, new, uh, new, new broadcasts that are coming forth this month. I feel like God's been preparing uh, behind the scenes of some new outlets, new news broadcasts, new anchor women, anchor men, new people, new mouthpieces of God will emerge this month. It's being prepared, easy in preparing it. So I bless the new media people, people who are called to the media. I bless you. Just receive this word because God's raising you up. You're going to be famous for Jesus's causes. God is, uh, God is bringing forth new breed of people, new voices, but these will be uh, in the media, even social media and um, new news outlets, new broadcasts, even like new uh, news outlets. So I bless them uh, in Jesus' mighty name. I see young and fresh faces in the realm of politics. 
um, in different countries, not just in the United States of America, but I saw some Asian faces that were young, people who are called to the politics, who are like Daniel, because Daniel was in the courts of kings and he was in politics, advising and uh, governing. There's an anointing of governing government that is coming over some of the young people who are called to run for city council and things like that. If you're running for a governmental office, I want to bless you. If you are young and you have God's given you a dream to be bold and courageous to run for something in your city government, in your local government, in your school board or in your state, I want to bless you. I feel like there's a special anointing this month for you to do that. I see some Asian American faces. I want to bless the Asians that this is time, your time to move forward in those things that you had a dreamt and you have, you have a calling for. There's Daniels that are being raised up in this hour. Daniels who are bold enough to say, you can throw me in the lion's den, but I'm gonna worship Yahweh three times a day. You can try to feed me that, but no, I'm not gonna eat that. I'm gonna eat my own food. How many of you hear what I'm saying? God is raising up Daniels in this hour. So I bless you to enter into these political realms and governmental roles in Jesus' mighty name. And I just want to bless California. California is in my heart. I just, I just pray for rain to come in Jesus' mighty name. I bind the demonic schemes of the me. I pray for complete transition of leadership over California. God says complete transition of leadership, that he's stirring something up over California. California will not burn. California will not die. California will live again. California will prosper again. California will move forward again. California will be fruitful nation again. I bless you, California, to be revived in this hour. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hmm. Lastly, I want to prophesy as I pray for you. I see healing evangelists coming forth. I hear the Lord saying, healing evangelists. Healing evangelists, healing and evangelism going together. That God is raising up some new healing evangelists this month. That in these revival meetings that we see, like let us worship, there's new um, revival movements that are being birthed this month. And there's lots of them. And God is saying there's healing evangelism that is being partnered together to move forward, to release healing. America needs healing right now. United States of America needs healing. Australia needs healing. Europe needs healing. People need healing. People need healers. If you are called to healing, if you, God's put it in your heart to heal people, raise your hand right now. I want to bless you. Father, let them be equipped to heal the mental illnesses, to cast out devils, to be able to uh, just breathe healing into people's lives. Not only physical, but mental, relational, emotional, all sorts of illnesses and traps that the enemy put on this modern generation, this generation. God, I pray that you will raise up amazing healing revivalists, healing evangelists in this hour. In Jesus' name, God is saying, harvest is plentiful, but how you reap them is that you're bringing the sick in because they need Jesus. You're bringing the sick people to receive healing of the Lord. I really believe that this is a word from God. So I bless you who are called to healing ministry. Go forth in Jesus' name in power and authority in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Okay, guys, um, that is it for today. That was the month, uh, word of the month for October. That was a fun word, huh? Um, before I go, I want to make a really quick announcement. Um, starting this month, I'm implementing a new thing. If you're interested, please look for it in the community board and announcements. One of the things that I don't, I don't disclose too often that I do is prophetic consulting. There's multiple layers of ministry. I do so much. We actually have this Facebook group called the Miracle ER where I plan to do more healing teachings and invite guest speakers to actually release healing for people. So if you're interested, keep an eye on that one. But another thing that I do is prophetic consulting for CEOs and ministry leaders. And uh, what that is, is it's a, it, it's a, it's a, a service where I provide prophetic insights into your businesses, but you do have to qualify. You have to be a, a head leader, like a CEO um, of a ministry or a business. Uh, or in the governmental position. So um, if you are interested in prophetic consulting for leaders and entrepreneurs and business people, you're in that place where you really need prophetic insight, then uh, please do keep an eye on the announcements that I will have. There is limited space. I already have many people that I help and it's a lot of work for me. And so um, if you're interested in that, do uh, email and, and I will give you more details on it. But I just felt like I had to release that for you, make that announcement because I feel like I could see right now where everyone's in a big transition, especially in the economic world. We need prophetic voices. 
we need prophetic insight revelation in the economic world because things are shifting, changing so much. So I put that out there for you. God bless you. Let me pray for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast. I pray for, uh, I pray against any uh, attacks of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. I cancel those word curses in Jesus' name. I pray for blessing and shift and a change in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.